Would you believe that this ST1000 tiller pilot would be able to steer my 23,000 pound 42 foot catch? Stay through the end of the video and I'll show you how. Hi, I'm Sailor Eric. And if you're interested in sailing topics, you've tuned into the right channel. Hands-free helming can be incredibly important for offshore cruisers. The most important reason being it allows you to rest or do other things underway. The previous owner of Silver Heels used an ST1000 tiller pilot, this ST1000 tiller pilot, to steer Silver Heels, a 42-foot offshore cruiser, with much success. But the location of the power hookup needs to be changed. The last hookup failed with time and use. Today we're going to remove the old power port that supported a retired device and replace it with the power port for this simple and easy to use ST1000 tiller pilot. In my cockpit, we are going to leverage this port here. This used to service an old device and we're going to replace it with a power port for an ST1000 Raymarine auto tiller. All right, I'm down here in this lazarette and looking at the electrical connections. So that leads to the battery's patch panel. And then it comes back up here. And this is just a little block that allows us to feed off of it. Right where that little hole is, I'm gonna enlarge that hole and install the device right there. So it's a super short run from this block to where this port will be installed. I pulled out these two old wires, which serviced this old power port for a retired device. I pulled out this long wire, which was servicing the old power port for the ST1000, which I didn't like because it wasn't really mounted very well. And you can see those ends are old, <laughs> right? They're corroded. So we're gonna replace this wire we're gonna cut some wire. And now we're gonna put ring connections on one end of the yellow, one end of the red. All right, here's my wire strippers. And I am going to use this 14 gauge, even though this is a 16 gauge wire, I'm gonna go one level wider because sometimes you don't need such a narrow scope to strip the wire. I'm gonna strip both ends. Both ends need to be stripped. Again, I'm gonna use the 14 gauge for the wire stripper on a 16 gauge wire. And that generally does the job. Exposed end is pushed in to the drum of this connection. And I'm just going to now squeeze this crimp tool. And you can see that end doesn't come out now if I put force. All right, same thing with this guy. Crimped, 14 gauge, boom, easy as that. I've got these leads connected to my multimeter. And I just turned on all the switches on my power panel and the multimeter didn't register anything. So it looks like the power leading up to this block, there's a problem with the connection. So I'm going to have to follow the wires back to the patch panel to see where they're connected and make sure they're connected properly to a switch, do the troubleshooting basically, to ultimately get that electricity up here, which is where I need it. Okay, so I figured out why it is that power is not coming through that line uh, that leads to that block from the batteries. Here we go. It's those two ends that are sitting there, not connected to anything at all. They're just sitting here unconnected. So I think, I think that happened when I contracted some people to install the radar. 
and uh, they went into this patch panel and <laughs> rewired some things. And I think that thing is just a uh, leftover that never got reconnected. So now I got to reconnect it. Last time I was here, I ended up pulling out about five pairs of zombie wires out of the electrical system. And I cleared out a switch, which you can look over here it is going to be one of these top switches, I believe. So I've, I've cleared off the switch. We're going to open up this breaker panel and we are going to ultimately run a positive wire from the panel from the switch to a patch panel down in here right so this patch panel is what we're going to connect this wire or maybe it'll be a little bit longer run but we'll connect that wire from a switch to that patch panel and then we will connect this wire to the patch panel as well this is the run that goes up to our power connection, which is what we are ultimately trying to connect today. It's ultimately going to be this switch you can see is free. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a free switch. So I'm going to connect that switch and run that wire through here, which will come out the other side. All right. Okay, I just ran this wire through this hose that is now uh, terminating on the other end into this patch panel area. to close the crimper to crimp the connector onto the wire okay you can see that it's in that middle spot and that is a solid crimp okay and this is getting attached to the switch right here it's a little awkward with uh, you know, left hand holding one thing, right hand fitting the screwdriver in there, but I think we got it. All right, so this is the connection that's going into the cockpit, and we're going to expose these leads. to expose this lead which is coming from the switch there we go okay and now we're gonna crimp all three of these wires with these spade connections right and then we will connect if you can see this down here we'll connect positive to positive on this block and then we'll connect the negative to the negative bus bar down here with these spade connections. Okay, so that patch panel is now connected all the way through. Let me show you. Here's the patch panel and uh, the wires. This negative wire, this negative wire here, is the wire going out to the cockpit. Positive wire is right here. This new one with the electrical tape, you can tell. So this is the wire coming from the switch. This is the wire here going out to the cockpit. You can tell because I just cut this wire off here so I had more tail on those guys. All right, I'm testing to see if I've got DC voltage coming through these wires and I don't see any voltage. So 
I guess I gotta make sure that I've got this connected. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got a good test going on here. Oh, I got it. The test is the problem with the test. So I didn't have a good connection in this coupling. I see 12.6. So I've got connection to the battery. We're gonna connect this to this place in the cockpit. So here we go. Drilled, drilled hole, and that's going to work perfect. We're at a point now where we've got the wires fed through this hole we just drilled in the combing, the cockpit combing. So now we're going to put disconnect connections on these wires. the power supply here the wire diagram for this uh, this apparatus the Raymarine ST1000 and the wiring diagram suggests that based on this notch we skip one port and then connect the negative and then the positive which is what we've done here we've already connected one disconnect connector to the negative I'm about to do that with the positive okay now we're going to connect these guys up, yellow to yellow. This guy's going to go over here. That works. Okay, here is the actual test to see this come on. And voila, she's on. And that's what we're trying to do, get power up here. The last step is to mount this housing. You can see that I've drilled three pilot holes in each of these corners, and then immediately put a, a uh, self-tapping screw in to keep it in place. And I'm about to do that now with this last corner. Again, this is just a small diameter Drill bit. Okay. Now we're just going to take a screw. Again, this is a self tapping screw here. That is a half inch screw. Number eight. There we go. Now we're going to tighten all these screws together. Great. So we don't need to try to get these as absolutely tight as possible. We just want to get this so that's nice and solid. It's not going to twist or turn. Uh, nothing's going to move. And we can connect this. Boom. Piece of cake. It's on. It's off. It's on. I have a switch back there that I can turn it off with. I can leave this connected and screwed on and just turn it off with a switch. Okay. So these wires terminate up here. It's an easy hook connection, right? You just hook these on here on this rudder and now they're connected. And these are basically just bicycle wires, right? So they come up through these housings, insulation, and then up to the tiller pilot. So now when I turn this on, If you watch the rudder, what that moves down there is the trim tab. And the trim tab ultimately moves the rudder. This tiller pallet is not designed to move heavy loads, right? It's only designed to move a light load. But the 
pressure on that trim tab uh, it is not a heavy it, there's not a heavy load that needs to be required so when you're in the water and that force is moving on those bicycle wires to create that tension it's enough to move the rudder so we're, we're using the autopilot to move the trim tab of that rudder. And you can see that it basically does it. And moving that trim tab of that rudder is all we really need to steer this whole boat. Just like that. If I move the rudder relative to the trim tab to take off some of the load that right now is the uh, the extreme end it's amazing to me that this system was invented in 1973 and it can still be useful after 50 years later it's my kind of hack simple technology is easier to maintain and repair I plan to use this method of self-steering over the summer next sailing season. If you have any questions or experiences you would like to share about the ST1000 Tiller Pilot, please leave them in the comments below. Until next time.